I'm Lynn Manuel Miranda, and you're listening to Hard Knock Life. Welcome to Hard Knock Life. I'm Keith Chow. I'm Brittany Monet. It's just me and you, Brittany. It's like old times. It's like the uh, right? DC TV Classics days. It, it definitely, which sometimes I still miss that. Well, you know, I, I keep thinking about bringing it back. I, I want to perhaps, I need to do something with the archives of that of that old show because they're they're still on the old feed, but I know I renamed the feed ever since we amicably yeah. split from the DC TV podcast family, but. Well, I'm still technically a part of that. That is true. But yeah, that is true. Say hi to Andy and everybody for me, please. Of course, of course. How you doing, Brittany? I'm good. I'm good. Had a a work shift last night, but other than that, I'm great. There's not a lot of nerd stuff to get to. Next week's a big old DC fandom. I know we're coming out of New York Comic Con, but mm-hmm. neither of us went to New York Comic Con, and it's the biggest show that's happened, I think, since the pandemic. So I wonder how it went. Yeah, and I just don't know if there was any announcements because I've pretty much worked like every single day this weekend. So I don't know like, if, you know, any announcements that came out because I haven't been too online. Yeah, yeah. Same here. I mean, if anyone's listening right now, I was like, how could you miss blah, blah, blah? You know, like we missed it. I mean, that's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like Comic-Cons used to be where everything happened. And I feel like New York Comic-Con came and went and no big earthquakes took place over the weekend but the big the biggest earthquake it was the earthquake to the multiverse that we will talk about is the finale of what if we finally got to the end and holy crap that was a hell of an end can you imagine if that was live action like that would be that's like avengers endgame level of stuff happening in like a 25 minute animated show yes my only complaint for the episode was i wish something else happened to like a little bit bigger um <laughs> what's bigger than breaking the multiverse i don't they didn't actually break the multiverse though <laughs> that's, that's the, true that's the thing they didn't break it but overall i really like the concept of the show and i still think that the doctor strange episode and the Tatala star lord episode are like the strongest episodes of the mm. show and the, the the episode before the season finale actually was really really good too I kind of hope we see the watcher in live action though. Yeah, I wonder how they're going to pull that off because like that's the kind of character that I think I mean th- we saw watchers briefly in Guardians 2. And they uh, look kind of goofy, you know what I mean? Like I yeah. wonder <laughs> cuz the watcher was dope in the show. Mm-hmm. With Jeffrey Wright's voice and everything. I just can't imagine taking that character seriously in live action. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they can make it work. Uh, maybe there's a way to make it work. First of all, I'll probably bring back Jeffrey Wright. Um, oh, number one. Yeah, I feel like there's a way to a way to do it where they can make this particular watcher look a little bit more, you know, maybe not as goofy. But <laughs> I don't know. I kind of do hope that we will see more of Captain Carter. Did you stick through the credits? Yes. Like this was there was finally a post credit sequence. I mean, season two seems to be continuing the adventure, and I think they confirmed. Haley Atwell is coming back for season two, so. I mean, I, I also kind of hope we get Captain Carter in live action. Mm. And I, I think the reason why I, I thought maybe What If was going to be the show that really finally sealed the deal of, okay, multiverse is like broken. I really thought it would be. It it wasn't. So um, now I'm just like, where is it? Is there no, or is it officially just Spider-Man No Way Home is where like we really see it happen in real time. So that's where, yeah. Yeah, and, and I think that's a good point because like we've seen so far in a couple different places where parts of the multiverse are splitting Yeah. in real time. Like there's the, the scene with the He Who Remains at the end of Loki. There's the, you yeah. know, I think the people have lined that up with the scene where Wanda becomes Scarlet Witch. Witch. Yes. And then there's, of course, from the trailer of Spider-Man where, where Peter and... Mm-hmm. strange kind of fuck up the the spell and then here i think it's the point when ultron becomes aware right like mm-hmm. i wonder if those four points in time all happen simultaneously right like yeah 
because because we know if you've seen Venom, you then know that the after credit scene is the oh, aftermath right. of like the universes being on one plane. Right. Of one so, of those things happening, whether it's strange, whether it's Wanda, whether it's Yeah. So I don't know. I I, I assume they're is saving it then for one of the bigger movies because not everyone they they're probably aware not everyone is watching all of the shows. Right. And you know, so that's probably why it's probably gonna happen in one of the bigger movies. But I was still hoping that you know it would happen in one of the shows just to give the shows a little bit more like no gotta watch them but i understand it's so much work some people say it's like oh it's like homework (laughs) but i guess i just enjoy watching all the different stuff so much that it's not homework to me yeah of course Um, right of course and it's crazy that like what if is over because Mm -hmm. you know we're we're i think without a marvel show for at least a month now not until hawkeye there's nothing between now and then of course there's eternals coming out in theaters but and it's it's a weird kind of like flow right because you go from loki to what if which seemed natural like loki yeah. really breaks the multiverse they're saying for people who didn't buy black widow on disney plus that about with premiere access now you can watch black widow right. it's available so that's kind of their like thing but it's like if you've already seen it you know you're in the place of there is nothing right and then do. black widow in the timeline is weird right because it takes place post civil war pre infinity war so it's like yes it feels like a thing out of time anyway it doesn't belong in this current like trajectory and even shang chi weirdly doesn't fit in the whole kind of like there's all these multiverse you know breaking things Uh and then shang chi kind of again sits outside that timeline like nothing in that movie is affecting or has been affected by the stuff we're seeing in what if and and uh, falcon winter soldier was similar right like that just kind of was like so it's almost like black widow falcon and winter soldier even eternals like they were almost taking well, place in their own. I mean, who knows? We don't know anything about Eternals. I think I yeah. feel like Shang Chi and Eternals are connected just because the only thing I can right. because of the after credit scene for that too is like basically hinting that the rings come from like wow. oh it's over ten thousand years old or whatever. So well, that's like, what we think. I don't think anyone else on the internet has been spe- which is weird because I felt it was so obvious, but I feel like only in hard knock life. This is the only place that's like maybe well, it's connected you know, to the Eternals. But if we're right, like hey. Come listen to our podcast, everybody. You should. This is exactly where, this is where um, we're breaking all the spoilers. But yeah, I'm definitely very excited for Eternals. Not because I'm someone who like knows everything about them. Like I still have not read further than where I am in the comics. <laughs> for those who at least know where I'm at in the comics, I've only read like an issue and a half of the Neil Gaiman run, which is where I pretty much think that this is the that where they're basing it off of the right. movie. But I'm just excited because of the cast. And I'm just a huge, like, Richard Madden fan. Like, I love him. I think he's amazing. So 100%. I'm excited to see him um, as basically, like, Superman, even though yeah. Captain Marvel <laughs> is Marvel's super, it, Superman. Like, I don't know. There's going to be two of them. So Yeah, yeah. Well, and Icarus, like, I mean, he's, he they're doing the uh, the heat vision thing the way, like, that's that's all he's doing. He's flying and shooting laser beams out of his eyes in all the trailers yeah. thus far. So. He's, they're really leaning into that aspect. So, yeah, I mean, there's this weird trajectory of like, because that happens and then we get Hawkeye, which yeah. doesn't feel like it's connected in that, you know, cosmic level. And then we get No Way Home, which is bringing the cosmic and the street level together. Right. So may, yeah. maybe that maybe it's all built into that. Maybe, you know, it, there is method to the madness because I'm like, what's all the street level stuff? And then you have all this cosmic stuff and then you, yeah. you you culminate with no way home where it brings the street and the cosmic together so yeah and then i mean there's already been rumors that apparently all of the daredevil cast is coming back for a disney <laughs> plus show like i don't know how accurate the rumor is but you know that's the rumor that's like flying around is that that's coming back um it's gonna be like a reboot so i don't know if like they're going to be now in the MCU, but like they can't go back to their universe because it got destroyed and they were like chosen from that universe. Do <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's what's happening. That's the that's the beauty of the multiverse is that everything that happened on the Netflix shows just happened in an alternate universe. But those mm-hmm. same, you know, to use a phrase from the DC multiverse on the CW, these are their doppelgangers. So there is a Matt yeah. Murdock who looks like Charlie Cox. He just yeah. happens to not have anything to do with the Matt Murdock, Charlie Cox from the Netflix show. Or exactly. Right? Yeah, that could totally be it too, which I'd be fine with that either way. Right. Um, 
but I kind of hope maybe they dye his hair red so he really looks like. <laughs> well, they tried in the first season. Like, it was a little red. You know, I feel like they, they went with the hair dye for a little bit, and then and maybe well, they just. They didn't, like, commit and actually right. dye his hair red. I feel like it was, like, a tint of red I and liked. not, like, a let's, you know, actually, you know, bleach his hair and put, like, and dye it red, you know? I don't know. They could have. I don't know. I just want to see what Charlie Cox would actually look like with, like, legit red hair. <laughs> Well, let's get into like some of the details. So you said that uh, you weren't that thrilled, but what was what I thought was cool was, you know, how we talked about all season. What if was just a series of standalones? It was just kind of like the way the comics are just this thought experiment of what if this thing happened or what if that thing happened? And, you know, but we all we knew this was coming because we've seen the trailer and we have eyes. So we knew that like circle shot of the Guardians of the Multiverse was coming. But yes. up until the last episode, there was no hint that these stories were all connected. So to me, one of the cool mm-hmm. things of this final episode was that, one, it was a direct sequel to the previous episode. And two, we got to revisit all of the episodes and characters that we got to know over the course of the season, except mm-hmm. one. And I want to dive into the lost episode of What If that, you know, at least for like a good five minutes going into the show, I was going, wait. Did I forget an episode? <laughs> Did we not talk about the Gamora? Where's the Gamora episode? Why is Gamora? You know? Mm-hmm. So what did you, were you confused or did you know going in that, oh yeah, there was this episode that they never filmed? Like, what was your first thought when you saw the Gamora, Tony Stark scene? Yeah, I, I was, me and my, because I uh, watched that show with my little brother, me and him were very like, what, what is their story? <laughs> like that, that, I think that also made me made it a little like, mm, I don't yeah. know why she's officially here other than it's like Gamora in a really cool suit. Right. And then yeah. the way the watcher narrates the scene, it's like, oh yeah, you remember when we saw Gamora and Stark on Sakaar? It was like, what? <laughs> no, I don't. I was like, <laughs> so that's why I don't know if they accidentally like maybe something happened in that episode where they had to cut it and mm-hmm. they didn't want to like air it and then they forgot about it when it came <laughs> to like, you know, that episode i feel like they're usually good about that stuff so that's why i'm like they purposely have us wondering what that is about so that it'll be brought up in the next season or um yeah so i I actually did some looking into it because i had the exact same thought like i was watching it and then and then it you know i think we we meet uh who's the first one that gets captain carter right they redo winter soldier which was really cool it was like wow i love i love when they like redo beats from the live action yeah. movies remember when like the dr strange's car crashes or all mm-hmm. the stuff where you like you see it side by side with the live action it's like beat for beat yeah and so they did the opening winter soldier which is one of the best openings of any comic book movie not just marvel mm-hmm. and but they just replace it with peggy and then you know batch rock comes back and it's this really cool like fight scene that ends with the watcher essentially showing up in the sky and choosing peggy to be his new avenger and i think next is uh pete quill getting yo i want to be kurt russell's agent because that dude got like top billing in the two episodes he was in and he had a total of like 10 words in the yeah. entire season and they got kurt russell to come back and just say like 10 words that's well first crazy. of all like anyone who knows kurt russell's like career he is like probably been the man who's done the most disney films like <laughs> he's been doing disney since he was a child yeah that's so, a good point so he'll come so like, he'll come back i feel like the- yeah he probably is like yeah i like disney you know they like probably one they probably pay him well especially <laughs> at this point since he's like literally been in so many disney stuff so i think that's part of it he's yeah. like yeah all right but it's just it's just wild. It's it reminds me of like Harry Shum Jr.'s single credit in Crazy Rich Asians for like a five wild. second mid credit scene. <laughs> I know so many Glee fans who probably went to go see that movie for him, and he's only in that one scene. I wonder how upset they were. But then he it's gets single billing. Good. Like it goes like Constance Wu, Henry Golding, Michelle Yeoh, and you're like yeah, that makes sense. And then then mid credit scene, oh. There's Harry Shum Jr. Where was he the whole fucking movie? And then that's it. And then Harry Shum Jr. gets his own billing. Right? Yeah. And so it's not even like a double he billing with someone talk. else. Did he even talk? He said scene? no words. And he just, he gets like the name and the block letters. It was wild. I was like, I want to be that dude's agent. <laughs> anyway, so we, and we see T'Challa come and he saves Peter Quill and he gets chosen. Oh. And then it cuts to Neville Lear. Neville Valier, Neville, whatever the 
Yes, the, I know. <laughs> whatever uh, Peter Dinklage's planet was called. Yes. And, you know, like, like we said, the, the Watcher narrates as if we've already met these people. And it's yeah. Tony Stark in Hulkbuster armor, but it's like Sicarian. It's like the uh, yeah. Grandmaster planet, the trash planet. And Gamora, and apparently, so there was an episode that was planned that got cut due to COVID and moved to season two. But what I don't understand, I mean, yeah, I know when you make movies and when you make TV, you don't always shoot everything in order. But like, you know, clearly this was all done, like the, the two episodes were supposed to be the last two episodes of the season. Yeah. How, how do you like just skip an episode from like early, who knows when it was supposed to air? But like, yeah, and it could have been they probably actually were gonna have Zoe come in and like, mm. you know, do that episode, and then for you know whatever she couldn't because probably you know maybe she actually had COVID or she was exposed to someone <laughs> had COVID, and they were trying to hurry up and get this stuff done, so they just probably decided to cut that whole entire episode. And then I don't think it was Zoe voicing. No, before, it wasn't right. She didn't. So yeah, back. then they probably just had someone else voice her for the like finale. Maybe, maybe it was a scheduling thing with Zoe. Good, but I know that they had planned the whole episode, and it was supposed because it was supposed to be a ten episode season, and for whatever reason, that was the episode they decided to cut. And I think it's going to be out in the second season, so it'll be, which it kind of it's kind of like the Black Widow syndrome. It's like. I don't care about them anymore. <laughs> like yeah. it might've been a cool episode had we not already seen them in, in the finale, but whatever. Yeah. I mean, then it'll, it will answer your question of what if, what if we actually saw know. the episode? <laughs> <laughs> Who is yeah. Gamora? Where is Gamora? Why, why is Gamora? That's, That's the name of this episode, by the way, we're calling this. Why is Gamora? <laughs> yes. I don't know. That will always be one of the most iconic. <laughs> I'll do you one better. Why is Gamora? Honestly, that was the phrase that popped in my head when her scene showed up. I was like, why is Gamora in this fucking episode? Because it makes no sense. Well, it was dope, though, that that's the Gamora in that universe who murdered Thanos and took his armor and melted down the Infinity Gauntlet. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and then she's like, has a Infinity Stone Destroyer. <laughs> which i kind of like the concept of like infinity stones from different universes don't work the same you know but it does throw a wrench into the whole end game plot because those are like infinity stones from three different universes right because they go back and yeah so it like did did tony snap actually work you know <laughs> like maybe maybe he didn't bring everybody but, or no i guess his snap is what dusted thanos because yeah. well both right they're using the same stone so when hulk snaps and he brings everybody back mm-hmm. i don't know it's it is kind of like a and all this stuff the more you think about it the more it starts to unravel so it's best to not think about it too much yeah and that's probably why they're going to do the multiverse so then they can kind of like anything that is an error can be like yeah you know chalked up to being either fixed in the multiverse or you know yeah yeah but ultimately ultimately you know the episode ends with you know i think to your point it was a little disappointing that it was just basically a big old fight for like 15 minutes you know it was very similar to like to in my mind it reminded me of the infinity war scene when like spider-man and dr strange were fighting thanos and it's like you know you, you didn't have peter quill at the end like do something stupid but it was just kind of like you know all look at this cool thing dr strange is doing to mm-hmm. to fight this giant cosmic warrior with like the multiple hammers and the the zombie portal which was pretty cool <laughs> but like yeah it was a little kind of like i guess underwhelming that as 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 like threatening and terrifying as ultron was the previous episode like all they're really doing it like he it, with, a, he, with a thought could have like destroyed the entire universe i didn't understand why he was like blasting them with laser beams yeah <laughs> i don't know and that's why i feel like there was something just like missing from that last episode and mm-hmm. i don't yeah i don't know if it was um certain other elements of the story got cut because of covid or that was always like the way that story was gonna end i don't know but yeah i feel like it the finale didn't hit as hard as it mm-hmm. could have but i 
just really do hope that we get live action Captain Carter. If if Haley Atwell actually wants to do it live action, then I want that. <laughs> what did you think of Killmonger? His, I mean, he was already a bad. He was a bad guy going into the episode, so he just, you know, like there was the sense that oh, are they going to redeem Killmonger? But of course, at the end, he and Armin Zola spend eternity, like Ray and Kylo, force battling over the lightsaber in the last jedi except it's just with the infinity stones which is kind of like like so do they not realize that they're inside a pocket universe, pocket universe? for probably, eternity probably not right away i don't <laughs> but, know how but long. at some point right <laughs> like they're going like they're going to go wait a minute where is everybody <laughs> hey, and what i if- feel like those two together that's probably not a good combo because they're both actually really smart yeah the, like so. what once they stop like you know, once they like look around and realize that there's nobody around and they mm. let go and they decide to like put their body like maybe Killmonger like, what if I inject your AI into my armor and we can share the power of the whatever and like they would be unstoppable. It's not exactly that's I'm like mm, this might not maybe, be a good idea. Maybe that's season two. Who knows? Maybe, maybe. So yeah, the what if finale, like overall as a as a series, mm. and now that like of the four that we've gotten, you know, if you include WandaVision, Loki, and Falcon and Winter Soldier, like, what is your final kind of overview of this Disney experiment? Because, you know, Hawkeye, of course, is coming, but that's like, it's almost like that to me is phase two of the yeah Disney TV stuff, right? Because, like, these it's four probably- were always going to be, like, that kickoff. Does it come out after Eternals? Yeah. Then it, it is probably like the phase two of the right. shows because I feel like Eternals is going to be the uh, the like movie that pivots you into the next phase of them to you. Um, I think Loki is still the best one that they've done so far. I know there's other people who probably want to fight me on that. I don't know <laughs> why. So many people there's so many people who really do not like Loki who liked literally everything else the MCU mm-hmm. has done, and I feel like maybe because it's so different in a right. way and the writing is a little bit more different that they're not used to it I, I don't know but I really just loved Loki a lot I think it was really well done I'm really excited because the writer is also the guy doing Doc, the Doc Strange movie mm-hmm. so I'm just hoping that you know with him and Sam Raimi that that movie is really gonna be like epic yeah um well it's so yeah. all I feel like it's all leading up to it though right like oh yeah most definitely it has to but I just kind of hope the multiverse like is already colliding and everything, which it seems like it will by the time we get to No Way Home. But like, mm-hmm. you know, so that when we get into Multiverse of Madness, it's but I kind of hope that it's Doctor Strange from What If. Like, oh, I was about to say, like, I do feel like that rumor gets quashed with this episode, though, right? Because his job yeah. now is just to watch Killmonger and Armin Zola for eternity. And if and like to, to what we just said. You know, if they do decide to like team up, like Ed Strange has to be there to like stop it before it can get out of hand. And if he's like, well, let me go take a break and fuck around with Spider Man. <laughs> well, hey, that could be the reason he decided to go mess around with Spider Man. And, and now, you know, yeah, maybe got, I don't know. That's probably not going to happen. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I liked 95% of WandaVision. Mm-hmm. So I would say like WandaVision would be next for me um then uh i don't know it's really hard to wear to a place like falcon and the winter soldier or what if i don't know they're tied for last i guess yeah just because like there's some things i really liked about what if and there's some things i really liked about falcon and the winter soldier but i feel like those two didn't uh, land it as well as they mm-hmm. could have for me and mm-hmm. i feel like wandavision the only thing that like we at all had said like it felt like there was something missing from it and then they revealed like we didn't get to film 30 minutes of like stuff that we actually had because right. of covid and stuff so i feel like maybe those 30 minutes at being added in could have made a difference and i might have actually really liked the finale of wandavision right um so yeah but i really liked it as a whole just because i feel like they mastered so well doing the different eras yeah of tv and then there was this like when you really think about it, if someone could do that, it's very sinister and creepy. Even if they're not trying to be evil, it's still like, uh, I don't know, you know, it's still like a nasty like feeling to it, I guess. I don't know. I just, I think for the most part, WandaVision did what it 
Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I'm I'm probably like a, agree with ninety percent what you said. I I would might flip Loki and Wandavision as like the top two because I think I liked Wandavision more a little bit than Loki, uh-huh. but for the same reasons, right? Like, I I didn't think the finale of Wandavision and really just like the last ten minutes of the finale of Wandavision didn't hit for mm-hmm. me. Where it just became like typical, you know, CG noise, right? But yeah. all the way up into that point, I thought it was like really affecting, really, really well done. And and one news piece, it didn't come out of NYCC, but like oh, apparently yes. Catherine I Hahn is getting that. a spinoff for Agatha. I'm honestly, I hope that they bring back, they bring the um, writers team from the show Salem that was on WGN. Mm. I don't know if anyone watched it. I watched the first maybe like two, maybe season three. Oh, but- do you think it'll be like Agatha back in like the... 1600s please give like i am such a huge like i love salem witch trial <laughs> era stuff oh, like, i didn't even I don't consider know that it, i don't know what it is about that like i i love it i really like gravitate towards it i don't know maybe i was a witch in the past like, uh, there you go maybe, maybe you're, you are the scarlet witch as well you know what i was thinking i was honestly thinking it was going to be like agatha in her you know, whatever kind of like spell has been put on her where she's, what is her name? Agnes in, in, in that town, slowly realizing she's Agatha again. Like I figured it would be maybe, and maybe they'll do flashbacks to like her time as a witch, but I thought it was, they would just do, it would be like a typical sitcom, but like a 2000s era. I don't know that maybe Yeah. as I'm saying it out loud, it sounds stupid. No, I mean, depending on how, like the thing is, if they do it a certain way, it could be really cool yeah either concept i think depending on how they you know write it and executed all that stuff it would be it could be really cool i don't know i just really have like an affinity for the salem witch trial yeah yeah yeah. and stuff and like that's why my favorite books of the fear street books are like the fear street (laughs) saga where it actually starts in like the like 1600s like that is always like my favorite or there you go is with the witches and stuff so i just really think i just have a thing for like the witch trials and whatnot but that show is really great shane west is on it for anyone who likes shane west in a walk to remember he's the main guy in walk to remember and then he's also in Lee oh he was in nikita Little. right yes yes, oh, yes. I remember, yeah 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 i remember that guy so one other rumor that we can't confirm yet is that the 10 rings thing that gets teased at the end of shang chi might be and end up being a Disney Plus series. So, oh, there's a couple of rumors. So, I don't know because apparently Tiana Paris is getting her own show as Monica Rambo. Oh, there's really? Another rumor that came out. I'm trying to remember what else. Well, I feel like Catherine's is the only one that's official just because it came from like the Hollywood. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. It. Yeah. 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 Like, also, actually, think, in the trades. Yeah. I think they said for that, she's also not just getting her own show. She's going to appear in now other movies and stuff. So, we'll see. We'll on? see. Well, it is it is definitely a transitionary period for the MCU right now with mm-hmm. the, the TV shows kind of like taking a hiatus because as we said, Hawkeye is coming out eventually. But it, I think it, it's going to be a different, you know, batch of shows because Hawkeye, I think Ms. Marvel still yet to come out. Ms. Marvel, then, I think, is the first show of next year. Of 2022. And then I'm not even sure what's after Ms. Marvel, right? Like, because we know there's a Moon Knight show coming. There's Armor Wars, Secret Invasion, like... All this, there's like so many, yeah, She Hulk, so many the shows. Is, is that a Secret Invasion and Captain Marvel 2 are filming at the same time at the same studio? Oh, so some they might be connected. Be overlap, and I'm starting to think that how you say her name, Zway Ashton, is playing the Scroll Queen. Don't oh. know if she's playing Jessica Drew Spider Woman because anyone who knows the comics, Jessica Drew Spider Woman at one point gets kidnapped by the scroll queen and the scroll queen is like pretending to be here so i don't know if she is playing both or she's just like the scroll queen but i know she is gonna she's supposed to be the villain in uh captain marvel 2 so you think captain marvel 2 will will flip the script and make scrolls bad guys because that was always like the the interesting thing about the movies so far is that scrolls Mm -hmm. are not the bad guy like they're so like evil in the comics that I think that they're going to do the whole thing with that particular group of there's a particular group of mm. scrolls that are like um they follow the scroll queen and uh they're like zealots and she wants to take over and infiltrate and right so I think that they might go with that like it's just this particular fraction well that's true right because it's always weird that like the entire alien race is like they're all evil like it's gotta be like 
good people and bad people just like every other species in the universe yeah exactly yeah um so i I think that they're gonna go with that which is gonna make it you know people be again in the situation of like we can't trust the scrolls we gotta wipe them out and like go back to the whole of why there should be a genocide against the scrolls which is you know horrible but like i think it's gonna like hit hit on why the kree were so like but the kree are about like honestly wiping out anyone that wasn't free yeah exactly (laughs) like there's no redeeming them well anyway let's take a break and then after the break we're going to get into what's nerd popping support for hard knock life is brought to you by manscaped who is the best in below the waist grooming and hygiene ladies listen up manscaped offers precision engineer tools for you and your man's jewels for any women out there who have come across a hairy bush you're in luck now Manscaped, the best men's below the waist grooming, have just launched their fourth generation trimmer, the Lawnmower 4.0. Yes, 4.0. Make sure your man joins the 2 million men in the world who already trusted Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code HARDNOCK, H A R D N O C, at manscaped.com. Yeah, and it's kind of swag just having a trimmer just for your balls it's cool i mean it just it feels like a it feels like a flex i feel more luxurious than i did before and i, I really do like these manscaped products and, I'm not you even know, gonna, like, like you said you feel luxurious luxurious using it everyone should feel luxurious um you know grooming themselves in all parts of their body and you know your face and your nether regions are important parts so take care of it do it don't just you know like i said don't do too don't do one in the same. Don't this cross the streams. A, don't cross the streams. And the best part, you can get 20% off your purchase plus free shipping with yes. the code HARDNOCK, H-A-R-D-N-O-C, at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping when you use the code HARDNOCK at manscaped.com. Experience premium grooming with Manscaped. And your balls will thank you. Yeah, men, really. Your balls will Thanks, thank you. Thanks, Dick Tracy. Or, you know, people who just happen to have balls who may not identify as uh, men, you know, your balls will thank you for taking care of them. All right, we're back. Brittany, what is nerd popping for you this week? So it hasn't happened yet, but just just because I'm very excited. It's happening for me this week, actually, as we're speaking. I am going to go see The Last Duel. Oh, nice. This is the movie with, you know, Adam Driver and Jodie Comer and... Ben Affleck and Matt Damon. I am like just a sucker for Renaissance yeah. movies. Um, and and first, Adam Driver, right? You're still yes, a sucker for Adam, Adam Driver. Driver. <laughs> yes. But I thought at first the trailer was going to be like a witch trial movie. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, right, right. I was like, oh, this is still cool too. I'm here for it. It's the story of Marguerite de Carugas, who, who was the a, a knight's like wife, who was the squire the knight was the squire to another famous person anyway she accuses him of rape and then he it's like the first rape trial in history or something like that Mm. and you know adam driver is not the not the good guy let's just say oh yeah no i know he's not the good guy in this yeah it just everything but it looks great ridley scott directed affleck and damon wrote it this is their first thing they've written together since goodwill hunting which is pretty amazing to think about yeah. So, such a wild departure from goodwill hunting oh i know so yeah i hope this will be a fun uh movie it's got me all excited for time period stuff like i love time period things it's, yeah it's, yeah I don't know what it is it just it's so fun for me it looks good so for me what's nerd popping is well i haven't finished it but i'm, I'm basically i'm behind on like all the asian pop culture that's sweeping the country I'm always behind. Like, uh-huh. I just watched Raya for the first time. I was wrong to skip it. You and Dominic were right. That movie was so much It's fun. really good. It's really good. It was really I good. I cried. It was really good. I, I was. I, I mean, it was the animation. It's probably the best CG mm-hmm. animation I've seen. Like, honestly, when she's on Tuk Tuk and they're rolling through the desert, like, it yes. looks live action. It doesn't even look like an animated movie. Which, I mean, yeah. to, to be fair, like, all that shit is animated anyway, even if it is live action, right? Like, yeah. like the, but it, it gave me like pod race feels, right? Like when she's yes. rolling through the, I guess, what is it? The Talon, the world of Talon. I thought Aquafina was great as Sisu. She was really, I know that like we are in a post everyone hates Aquafina world, 
but I thought she did a really like affecting job. I did too. As Sisu. Um, I'm one of those people that even if I don't necessarily care for someone, if they do something right, I'm going to give them their flowers because mm-hmm. like, I just, that's how I feel. Like I can't like sit there and lie. I'm like, mm, good. <laughs> yeah, I thought she was great in both Shang-Chi and in um, Raya. Like I loved both of those movies and I could like, I don't know. It was just really cool. I, I liked it. Yeah. I'm sad that Daniel Day Kim didn't get to do a, as much voice work as I was hoping he would, but <laughs> it was still a lot of fun. Yeah, but Raya was really good. I, I was, I'm like I said, I'm late on it. I know the rest of Asian America has moved on to other things, but I was, I was like, I finally sat down and watched it, and I was really moved by it. Kelly Marie Tran was awesome. She need, yes. she like what we could have had with Rose, Ooh. you know, because she's such a great actress. Just in her voice work and what she does with Raya is amazing. Like when she's a little girl, Raya, you can tell she's like voicing her differently, but it's still recognizable mm-hmm. like i think they like Gemma chan couldn't do that because i think they had a different actress playing young namari mm-hmm. and then adult namari whereas like kelly mutran did both and it was like she was clearly like a little girl and then clearly like an adult well, and I, it was... I think Gemma chan has such like a i don't know what's the word is it sultry voice <laughs> that it it, it wouldn't work as like a nine-year-old <laughs> like it's harder for her probably to like hit a nine-year-old voice right you know that, especially if she doesn't do a lot of different like voices in general it's probably harder for her to like try to sound younger yeah yeah yeah. but kelly was great like again and you know what it made me long for perhaps and i feel like the sequel trilogy is kind of like dead and buried any anything star wars from now on will probably take place in a different time period than the sequel trilogy that said it makes me long for some some sort of like animated rose tico project <laughs> uh, i i don't know how true this is but there's just been some rumors that john boyega is actually going to be coming back as finn for a live action show oh he would he would actually come i don't know i feel like he and so i know Lucas he said he wouldn't and stuff but there's been rumors that like something has come to an agreement i don't know i have saw rumors somewhere but it could be totally like you know bs and people just like you know pulling your leg right <laughs> i mean at the very least give us the uh animated duel of the fates redo of episode nine i would i would love that just let let kelly marie and john boy come back and voice like cgi rendered versions of what the episode nine story should have been because I, I think that would have been dope. Anyway, the other Asian pop culture thing that I'm a little bit late, I'm not as late on this as I am on Raya, but I haven't finished it yet, so I can't really talk about it. So maybe next podcast, I'll, I'll dig into it. I don't know if you've been watching it, but Squid Game, I know the whole fucking world is talking about Squid Game. I need to watch it, um, because everyone's talking about it. I'm like, oh, I gotta watch it. I'm two thirds of the way through, so I haven't okay. quite finished. So maybe by it's one of those things that I feel like if I try to watch it on my own and then one of my family sees me watching it, like, oh, (laughs) can we watch this together? And then I got to restart it. So I'm just kind of like, do I ask them if they want to watch it with me or do I just try to watch it on my own? I I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. So those are the things that's never popping with me. Squid Game. And like I said, two thirds of the way digging it so far. But truth be told, I don't understand why it's so big. In, I just like, don't know. Is America. it a scripted show or yeah, is it a yeah, game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's show? a drama. Okay. It's a drama. It's a. I was it's very a... like trying to figure out if it was a <laughs> like actual that... reality show. No, it's yeah, it's. I was very confused on that part. I was straight up fiction okay. because because the shit they get into, like, there's no way it could be real. But but what I yeah, I just don't get like. I mean, it's it's great. It's entertaining. But like, what is it about this that has touched a nerve in America that like everyone is talking about it and like Halloween's coming up and everyone's gonna be wearing squid game costumes and stuff like I don't I don't know why Um, it's become that huge but it's it's great it's it's really entertaining but it's not like I feel like it could be one of those things where like you know if you're someone who actually watches tv shows and films from other countries you're like yeah this is like everything else (laughs) this is like everything else this is decent it's it's all right and then you know people who are very americanized and only watch things from american studios unless it gets like you know oscar status yeah, 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 yeah. out here and they won't see it so i feel like that could be part of it where that's like, a good point oh my god i've never seen anything done this well when it's like oh yeah have you watch watched anything of, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah there's a lot like, of people who don't watch enough stuff until like it's watch like any anime bro like <laughs> this is basically like a live action anime anyway i 
highly recommend like not that i need to recommend it because it's like the most watched show in the history of netflix but like i said i'm, I'm digging i probably have it finished by next podcast so if if okay, you okay. Uh, get a chance to watch it maybe we'll talk about it then anyway Ooh. we will we will end it there Brittany, how can people find you on the internet uh, you can find me at Hi Brittany Monet, and you can also check out at Naomi Podcast, which is the official hub for all the other kind of podcasts that I'm doing because it's all shared on the same feed. And it also has the backlog of Black Lightning if you're someone who's recently discovered Black Lightning because now I know the final all seasons are on Netflix. So just in case that's there, if you want to go back and listen to it. Awesome. And you can find me on Twitter at the real chow, the underscore real underscore chow, and follow the nerds of color at the nerds of color. Go to hardknockmedia.com to find this and all the podcasts in the hard knock family, including classic episodes of DC TV classics with me and Brittany under the title DC multicast that I'm going to figure out what to do with one day. But give us a rating and review if you re- if you listen to this or any of the podcasts in the hard knock family on Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, anywhere you get podcasts. And uh, that is Hard Knock Life for this week. Until next time, who is Gamora? Why? <laughs> See ya.